Personal story segment tonight, an interesting new book by comedian Colin Quinn. It's called The Coloring Book, A Comedian Solves Race Relations in America. And it is out today. If the book lives up to its title, that would be an amazing deal, would it not? Here now is Colin Quinn. So I know you're being facetious and all that, but you did grow up in a racially mixed neighborhood. Yes. Um, I did not. Levittown was all white. It was all um, Irish. Uh, what, your neighborhood? Yours. It was. No, no, there were Italians and it was a lot of Jews, but no blacks. Um, what did you learn in your, where was your neighborhood and what did you learn? It was Park Slope, which now we know is a Swiss Bro village, but right. back then. And um, I learned... Uh, well, that people like you could people could be re prejudiced without being racist, for example. Give me an example of that. Well, like a store owner would be like, hey, you're not next. The colored lady was next. Then the Spanish kid, then the Chinaman, then you. Okay. So really, individually, they're being prejudiced, but, but systemically, they're, not, they're being fair. Because they don't know any better. I mean, well, but they're being then. systemically fair. You couldn't because they're saying you don't jump the line. Right. But if you did that now, the line would be right around your neck. Oh yes, you couldn't a, do it then. Commission form. But yeah, we, we open a program now with more of this, uh, you know, cops and right. minorities and all of that. Do you in this book? I, I I went through it, but I didn't read it all. Is there an overarch theme of the book that? Americans could lessen this racial situation. Well, I mean, at least we could try. Like, I have ideas, but you need to have shows. Yeah, I know. I know. You're like, you have ideas for this. I actually have ideas. We, uh, unless we have, because what we have right now is discussing how we should have a discussion. That's the only racial discussion you have. So you want to cut through the BS, right? Yeah, because I feel like the only people that speak are people that are angry or pandering. That's the only voices you hear. So nobody, the, as you know, from any racial debate, everybody already has their conclusion. So there's no discussion. Yeah. They've already decided what they want it. You know what I mean? They right. want to convince you. So you need shows on TV. That's how we do things here. Okay. You're in show business. You meet a lot of people. Is there racism in show business? You think minority performers don't get the same break that whites do? Well, I mean, it's a white majority business. I wouldn't say they don't get the same breaks, but I would say there's, you know, people hire their friends and the people they yeah, went to school with. but that's more cronyism than, than Right, color. but a lot of that's white cronyism. Okay. Now, Stewart and I, you know John Stewart, you ever hear him, the guy? Yes, okay. the guy from the Daily Show. We had a big thing about white privilege, and he's right. tell, telling me that, you know, white privilege is why uh, the minorities can't move, and I'm right. looking at him, I go, have you ever watched the NBA? Right. Um, okay, so, but the, as you said, there are hardened beliefs. Stewart sure. believes white privilege is in play, right. keeping people down, and I believe if you work hard and do what's necessary, no matter what color you are, you can... You can succeed. Right. Where do you come down on that? I mean, it's hard to say that there's 100 percent, but I mean, I do feel that uh, I feel like the, it depends on the job where there is. So, I mean, I can't say that there's 100 percent of what you're saying is right. But, yes, I do believe that people use terms like white privilege and white supremacy too easily. You OK. Know? In your business, if you're funny. Yes. Does it matter what color you are? No. OK. In the sports business. If you can play and score, does it matter what color you are? No. If you can pick stocks that go up, does it matter what color you are? Bill, I've never met a black stockbroker. Let's get honest for a second. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Now you're there are. Home. There are. Bill, get out of Wall Street. Believe me. <laughs> and, and if one of them comes in here and says, I got 10 for 10, everybody's going to Of course. But I'm, okay. you know, <laughs> I think you picked the bad example for a business. Right. Go to Wharton. There's black students down there. Yes. Come on. No, I know what you're saying. Well, <laughs> See, that's racist, Quinn. You can't do that. <laughs> I'm giving everybody a break in every incident. You, there's no black stock. Really. Come there's on. No black stock. <laughs> you just killed your whole book. I live, I live on Murray. I live three blocks from Wall Street. I've yeah. never seen a black stockbroker. Is that right? No, I don't know. They work from I home. Mean, I'm sure they do. They work from home. Yeah, That's there right. you go. All right. Good book. Very provocative. Uh, Colin Quinn, thanks for coming in.